The Great Pyramid is attributed to Khufu, dated circa 2570 BCE, 4th Dynasty, Old Kingdom. 280 cubits high, 440 cubits for the base, slope angle of 51 degrees, 52 minutes. Core blocks are limestone, casing with Tura limestone, granite blocks for the king's chamber, and plug blocks. One could go down a multitude of rabbit holes when it comes to this structure. Encoded mathematics including pi, phi, the golden ratio, and Euler's constant. Encoded measurements, the royal cubit, meter, seconds, dimensions of the earth, sun, and moon, speed of light. Encoded frequencies of F-sharp, A-sharp, C-sharp, and D-sharp in what's known as the 432 Pythagorean tuning. The Orion correlation, Fibonacci spiral, squaring of the circle, location in relation to all of the Earth's landmass, geopolymer, the list goes on. Then there's still its purpose, a literal or symbolic tomb, tool for ascension, water pump or ram pump, power generator, encoding of knowledge, combination of some or all of these. Our private visit was for a block of two hours, so let's see what we see. We're starting our journey into the pyramid. No photos and videos allowed, unfortunately. Keep moving. He's up there. Yeah, he was walking next side. He's not commenting. Some of you go up, the green chamber in the middle, and then the green chamber at the top. The story goes the original entrance was unknown or forgotten by 820 AD. So Al Mamun's men just started boring a hole, only around 10 meters off of target. While doing so, a slab concealing the granite plugs at the junction broke free. The men dug towards the sound and accurately hit the ascending passage. They were then able to dig alongside the plugs to gain access to the descending passage. These pictures are of that junction, the lowest granite plug, entrance to the descending passage, and an interesting carving. As you'll see in the footage, it was too dark to see any of this in person. The entire pyramid is kept dark, which seems intentional. Okay, so this one, once you get below, once you get to here, there's no railing to the side. Oh, you're yeah. good. Just uh, put your hands on the side. You can, you can lift your head up a little bit. And there's a railing. The railing restarts. Oh, okay. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. And then we're going to hit a light. Oh, these runners are kind of low. Oh, good. There's two. Okay, now there's two railings, so. Egyptians are really small people, apparently. <laughs> Once again, bats. I love that smell of ammonia in the morning. Uh, in like two or three steps, it starts getting a little steeper. Okay. It's Can't see shit. crowded in here. Lou isn't keen on tight spaces, so the banter between us is to keep everything relaxed and look out for one another. This descending passage is 3.1 feet high, 3.4 feet wide, goes down at an angle of 26 degrees for 345 feet before leveling out for another 29 feet. This one feels, this one isn't as bad as the red. Man, that light really sets off your features, Lou. <laughs> okay. How are you doing there, Tom? I'm fine. Yeah, he's it's good. It's, it's, your, it's your one and only in front of me that I, it's just like, I can't figure this out. Like, fine. No, I'm, I'm leaving some buffer for Lou. Oh, okay. Buffer? Yeah. What do you want to call it? Lots yeah. of buffer. I don't want to jam a nuts that's in why space. I, and... that, and that's part of the reason I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go ahead and start now. Oh, yeah, there's, there's a stair missing, and there's no, and like two steps, and there's no, uh, you can't see, which I was thinking I could see. Is it's, it's okay. okay. Yeah, we just awesome. lost the light, but we're okay. Oh, we're good. Can you imagine if you were like the guy, like the killer, Kelly told you to find the treasure at the bottom of the pyramid? Pictures and video are not allowed inside the pyramids without permission, nor are measurements. In fact, taking measurements isn't allowed anywhere on the Giza Plateau, period, without special permissions. Can you imagine being in the cabin when I had to clean this shit? No. Oh, good. Well, okay, then there's another missing step, but you can see it pretty easily. Yeah. Because it's, uh, it's a light. Got a good pace. I like it. It's comfortable. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. Here's the missing. Oh, yeah. Yep. You got stuff. 
Well, I had one before. Next one, Tom is missing. Yeah. It's a double span. All right. All right watch this. There's a missing anchor here. Yeah, now it's dark, so I'll probably slow down a little bit. All right, that's, that's the shiny thing. Don't step on the shiny thing. Consequences vary from being forced to delete footage, having cameras confiscated, possibly a trip to the police station, or even being banned from the site. Some individuals have reported having to sign a sworn statement, preventing them from publishing any acquired content on social media as well as within scientific publications. For the most part, I'm holding the phone around chest level so as not to be extremely obvious, hence some of the odd angles. The lighting is abysmal, so you can't see any of the workmanship. Handrails are detached in several places, randomly missing deck slats, strong smell of ammonia, and broken fluorescent bulb shards everywhere. It's a good time. Ooh. Railing on there. All right, yeah, careful. Railing, railing on your right's not tied into the wall for a yeah. bit. All right. On. Again, we got another loose one But I'm down farther, railing and you can still right. use it the whole way. It's just loose. What the heck? Who are these people? Railing's disconnected. The head, Tom. That we're under the command of their god team to do build the pharaoh. Plumbness really loose right here. Funeral thing. Because we can't hold it. You need to start crawling down here. What's that? You will need to start crawling down here. Okay. Sorry, I'm just keeping an eye out for you, darling. How do we get out? Same way. You go up, and Alpha's a lot easier, Lou. You'll see it. Yeah, it's good. So, are we going to pump our head, or what's going on? Yeah, just look behind you. I'll hold the torch out. Okay, you got one step left now. What's that down? Okay. 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 Okay
subterranean chamber. This is the deepest portion of the pyramid. You're under incredible mountains. We're under the center of the Great Pyramid. To me, this is the most important, most significant portion of the Great Pyramid. This, in my mind, is where the action is as far as consciousness levels, um, uh, raising awareness, promoting psychic abilities, if you will, all that type of good stuff. I mean, that seriously, because I think what's happening here uh, in my studies is you're tuning out or you're Rock is absorbing low on um, high frequency short wavelength background radiation, electromagnetic radiation, etc., and it's enhancing long wavelength low frequency radiation. You, you've heard of Schumann resonances? Yeah, no. yeah, Schumann resonances is enhancing and collecting, you would enhance those or concentrating them. Schumann resonances affect our consciousness, so I think it consciousness, psychic abilities, that type of thing. Uh, this is the place where, for instance, the air, uh, Princeton, Engineer, Princeton Engineering Anomaly Research, they did laboratory experiments here using random event generators, etc. And that, according to them, and I spoke to them directly, about this guy named Riley Nelson, that seemed to pick up certain aspects of consciousness I'm not an expert, but this northwest corner with the small steps to nowhere needs more analysis. This is the dead end shaft in the subterranean chamber. Yeah, it lives up to his name. Okay, I gotta crawl all the way back there. Contrary to the repeated misinformation, this passage is not perfect. The walls are not smooth, the corners are not crisp, it isn't even straight. It does have what one might call ribs or undulations, which might affect sound as well as water flow and would be interesting to test. Some people believe it's plugged with a block or jammed up with packed and solidified sediment. It looked like a solid bedrock dead end to me, but I didn't go hammering away at it. Just like this, all the way up. And we're not supposed to be shooting video. And there was a CCTV camera in the subterranean chamber that I didn't notice. So we'll see what happens. This staircase connects the forced tunnel with the ascending passage, which is 3.1 feet high, 3.4 feet wide, and goes up at an angle of 26 degrees for 129 feet. This is the ascending chamber towards the Grand Gallery. Grand Gallery, Queen's Chamber. This horizontal passage is 3.8 feet high for most of its length. Once it steps down, it's 5.7 feet high. Width appears to be the same 3.4 feet. I'm not sure why the dimensions are always referenced in decimal, and they're not always accurate, but they're close. There's the step, the step down to the different level. Queen's chamber. It's one of the supposed air shafts. That's not air shafts. How are you gonna get air in there? It doesn't even go to the outside of the pyramid. Oh wow. Get to go down. The 
Queen's Chamber is very similar to the upper chamber of the Second Pyramid. It's located dead center north to south, but offset to the east. Rectangular footprint, vaulted ceiling, even the unexplained hole in one corner. It differs by having the so-called star or air shafts, as well as the coffered niche. Supposedly a coffer fit right in here, slotted right in here. And then someone dug a tunnel at the end of it. All right. Here's an older picture prior to the installation of that metal door. This diagram shows the horizontal passage within the niche. Interesting how it seems to jog to the right around the midpoint. At some point it was crudely extended and veers to the left, which I also find interesting. This is one of the air shafts, the opposite side from the door. Is that where they tried to send the robot down and they stopped it? One of them. I don't know which shaft they sent the robot through. So they notched two consecutive blocks instead of trying to carve a channel down the middle of one. The Grand Gallery is 28 feet high and 153 feet long, 6.8 feet wide at the base, 3.4 feet wide at the top. 54 slots line the walls, 27 on each side. I'm unsure of the reason for the intermittent plywood covers, but I do know these iron L brackets are modern so-called repairs. Here's the side ramps. Can't see them away from the light. <laughs> Here are the side ramps, and here are the pockets, and the chamber angles up, pockets go straight down, and sock it in. Here's an old picture prior to the installation of the wooden ramp and handrails, as well as the Great Step before it was filled in. This is the Great Step and they filled it in. Small tunnel. And here's the door on the right. And Matt from Ancient Aliens did a recent video on it. It goes in, jogs to the left. It's very fast. And 
the antechamber or portcullis, which has these half circles supposedly to hold logs and ropes going over to lower the blocks to block entrance. There's nothing matching on the other end. There are set logs. But there are these diffusing ridges. I think we saw in the temple by the Djoser Step Pyramid. chamber goes in further, but hits that lid, which is why they say they'd never be able to push that coffer in. The front edge of this passage into the antechamber shows extensive damage, probably from when they were removing the plug blocks. The metal door blocks a tunnel dug by Cavigula in the 1830s. This cross-section diagram shows that it runs parallel to the northern shaft. We also see documentation of the floor excavations in the king's chamber. The overhead view shows the tunnel goes back to the left and then runs beside the shaft as far back as Gattenbrink's door. Makes you wonder why no one's allowed access. Then again reference to the excavated floor, which is currently covered with metal plates. I also found a diagram of the antechamber. This block has a nub and I totally missed it, but here's a picture from the internet. I'm not sure about this room. I see how these could be runners for the portcullis slabs, but I also see audio baffles, and I can't rule either function out. There's the entrance where we came in. The room's all granite. The shafts are much lower than the Queen's Chamber. They're within the first course. Queen Chambers were about my face level. Those are about waist level. The fan looked custom made to fit that space, which is basically an elongated pentagon which tapers down to the rectangular tunnel. There have been multiple in-depth studies on the number and layout of blocks, supposedly a hundred, as well as the dimensions of this room. It's a future rabbit hole for me. You can also see a lot of damage, like trying to pry out a block and chipping the edge type damage. Everything else is tight. The granite box is larger than the ascending passage, leading most to believe it was placed during construction. Others think this block is removable and might lead to a second entrance. For reference, here are some old photos showing open metal grates covering the ripped up floor. This is probably an entrance plug block, and this is one of the floor slabs. Neither remain. It's possible I just wasn't looking in the right place, or wasn't at the right angle. Possibly the adrenaline was still pumping, but I'd have to see it in person to be convinced. Photos are too easy to fake.
This room is acoustically active, or sensitive, and as you can hear, it gets loud really quick. Here's a close-up of the northern shaft. Again, it's a rabbit cut into the top edge of two adjoining blocks, and the intriguing shape of the southern shaft. Notice how there's a larger square recessed into that block. The metal floor plates, speculated second entrance with my hotel keycard still in the gap, and then more looking for the carvings and saw cuts, which I still didn't find. And of course, we each had to take a turn inside the granite box. This is looking down on the Grand Gallery. Looks like seven layers, seven steps in above the, the bottom wall layer. I think that's the groove that the theorized the wooden runner was in for the counterweight system. And Chris Dunn theorizes that those vertical slots were for the frame that held the Hermholtz resonators. This thing is massive. Again, they filled in a little notch where if this were a counterweight system, the rope would run. They're a little deeper than my phone is long. Those are modern hooks. Those roof tiles overlap like clay tiles on a roof. So they were laid from the top down, it looks like. cover for the clean chambers in place. That will take you back out. That goes back into the queen's chamber. And this is the well shaft. down to the grotto, into the subterranean. These diagrams show that the concealment stone would have been slid into the wall. There may have been a second one underneath, but I'm not sure. This would definitely be another fun area to explore. Matching notches yeah. on both sides. If you want to have a rest, just forward. They yeah. go up, up at an angle. Well, I so I believe either wooden yeah. logs or stone lintels yeah. spanned because then a false slab was here because this was all closed right. in. Yeah, this, this was all closed in. Yeah. So they had to smash out this rock to find this. Yeah. 
and I don't know if this was plugged or not. Do you? I think it was just this slab, but I know it's just Robert Duty. This is the easiest one to go into because it's flat. No slope. These were the test drills when they were looking for chambers behind the wall. But all they found was sand, like a fine uh, quartz sand. Not just the regular desert sand. If you can separate yourself from the group, do it. If there had been more time, I would have revisited the subterranean chamber as well. Steps down into the queen chamber's level. I can almost walk standing upright, fully upright. I just scratched my head, and I'm 5'7. Opens into a smaller room than the king's chamber with the pitch ceiling. I believe it's six tiles on each side. Hard to see the seams. One. chamber was five. The king's chamber shafts were at waist level. These are at my face level at the top of the second row. This one still has a piece on it that shows you that they weren't open. They still had this five to six inch slab locking them off. Floor's a little rough. They have a coffered niche. Base level. One, two, three, four. With the carved tunnel in the back and then further back, people have tried to expand on it by digging, probably looking for treasure. Having a chamber in the Great Pyramid all to ourselves was amazing. Apparently the pyramid can be rented for an overnight stay. I have no idea if that means full access to all three chambers for the entire night, nor do I know the price tag, but I need to find out. Close up of the northern shaft, southern shaft, and the peculiar hole in the corner. Descending. Going out. Smuggler shaft. This oh, okay. okay. tunnel does look like it was bored through blocks. During the first day at Giza, I'd asked the guide about getting access to the main entrance. He said it was usually a no, but with him, no problem. Turned out the guards disagreed. They allowed me to get a bit closer, but all things considered, I decided not to push my luck. Yeah, this is as close as I'm getting to the main entrance. I wanted to look for the inscriptions of the four elements under that gable, but they say it's off limits, and they have guns. So I can't really argue. This is an old picture of that entrance. The large chevrons, huge blocks, and top of the descending passage. And we're down. 
Now I want to find that corner socket before they make us get on the bus and leave. Larry from the American Institute of Pyramid Research has been focusing on all these depressions and markings on the plateau. Yet another interesting rabbit hole. Camel poop. Camel poop and or dog poop. sure if these are actually the sockets or just quarry marks. It's hard to tell. If it were any closer, it would have bit me. Notice how the entrance is not perfectly centered. It's just off center. And Khalif Al Mumu's entrance tunnel, so they say, is even further off center. I think that it's actually an exit. This is the photo of me already wanting to come back.